Welcome to the Dell EMC SC Series demonstration video showing data reduction with deduplication and compression. I am Darren Schmitz, part of the Dell EMC storage engineering team. First, an overview. A few things to keep in mind is that data reduction in the SC Series is performed post process. What this means is data must be frozen by a snapshot in order to become eligible to be processed by the data reduction engine. That engine is built into the data progression subsystem. So data reduction work is actually performed by either the on-demand data progression, which is taken following a snapshot, or it's done by the nightly data progression cycle. There are a couple of requirements for data reduction to work. Data reduction is compatible with most controller models, but I encourage you to see the latest release notes of your particular array. Deduplication with compression requires SCOS 7.0 and above to work. It also requires flash or SSD drives in the storage pool. Once that requirement is met, deduplication works on both the SSD and HDD drives. Now, if you're using compression by itself, that doesn't require flash drives and only requires SCOS 6.5 and above. So let's get to the demonstration. First, let's show how to enable dedupe. So to do that, I right click on the example volume and say edit. And then I drill down into the data reduction section. The data reduction profile section allows you to choose which reduction technique to use on each volume. The choices are to either use compression or deduplication with compression. Depending upon the volume's workload and the type of data contained in the volume, each reduction method can have different effects on the efficiency and overall latency of the volume. Performing tests within your environment is highly recommended to determine which data reduction method is best suited for your application. While testing, the data reduction input is an additional setting that when used can help reduce the data reduction latency impacts on I.O. operations. Simply put, this setting tells the system what data the user wants to be eligible for data reduction. By default, all snapshot pages is selected. This allows data reduction to process any data that is frozen by a snapshot. In contrast, selecting inaccessible snapshot pages instructs the system to reduce only data frozen by a snapshot that has become inaccessible because other data has been written over it. In other words, this is data that the host cannot directly access, but still needs to be kept for snapshot recovery purposes. In essence, all snapshot pages tries for better reduction ratios, while inaccessible snapshot pages tries for better performance. Once again, write performance is not hindered by deduplication, so any latency impacts would be seen with read performance of the deduplicated or compressed data. So let's take a look at a volume that has already been deduped. For volumes that already have data reduction enabled, the data reduction paused option appears. When this is selected, this will pause data reduction on the volume. To clarify, checking this option will not rehydrate all of the existing reduced data, but merely stop any new data from being processed by the data reduction engine. For volumes that are already reduced, setting this back to none will trigger the volume to be rehydrated during the next nightly data progression cycle. Now let's look at some volume statistics on the deduped volume. When we click on the tiering section to view the volume's disk usage, you can see that the estimated deduplication ratio for this particular volume is 4.97 to 1. 
saving about 432 gigs. Because data reduction works across multiple volumes in the system, the ratio and savings for each volume is estimated. This estimation is done through statistical algorithms to analyze the data. Now let's navigate to a volume that is using just the compression engine to show its tiering statistics. Similarly, with volumes set to just use compression, you can see the estimated compression ratio and its associated savings. When we look at the storage types, which shows the disk consumption at the system level, the data reduction savings shown here are the actual system-wide savings and not simply estimates like at the volume level. If we look at the right pane, we can even see data reduction savings broken down by each tier of storage. From this screen, we can view the statistics of all the volumes in a list view and even sort by the estimated data reduction column to view which volumes have the highest capacity savings. Thanks for watching. For more information about the SC series, please visit dell.com slash storage resources. Additional links can be found in the video description below.